Nancy Rothwell, and I've been a member of Women Painters of Washington since the year 2000. I was president from 2001 to 2003, and it's been a wonderful organization for me. I have to say that the best part of Women Painters for me personally has been the friendships that I developed over the years with other professional women artists. So I feel so lucky to have been part of the group. Uh, so a little background about me. I was a geriatric physical therapist, and I also worked as a director in the Medicare program for many years. So you'll notice that a lot of my artwork takes on the topic of healthcare. The way I got hooked on painting was because of a woman painter member Kathy Gill. She was the first one to put a paintbrush in my hand and she said, Nancy, let's paint a teacup together. And I said, oh, I could never paint. But she said, yes, you can, my dear. And the rest is history. We had a great time. So I think that is the end of this segment. We'll talk again soon. My association with women painters began in a small commercial building next to a railroad track in Fremont, an interesting, funky neighborhood in Seattle. My husband and I owned this small four-story triangular-shaped building. It was built in the 1920s, and it was a perfect location for an art studio. Lots of parking, lots of inspiration for paintings, which included tugboats on the ship canal, rusty old crab pots, piles and piles of rusty chain from the tugboats, and of course the industrial workmen themselves in their overalls. The art studio was on the first floor, and my husband Lewis and I lived upstairs. For many years, I shared the first floor art studio with women painter members Kathy Gill and Diana Shine, and we hosted a few women painter paint outs in this rustic neighborhood. One photo uh, that you've just seen is the railroad engine from a Ballard Railroad Company that would park next to our building so we painters could paint. Lewis would dress up in engineer overalls and pose so we could create our masterpieces. We had lots of laughter and potlucks during those paint outs. For several years before I moved into the building, well-known Northwest painter Richard Gilkey had his studio in that same space, the first floor of the building. This was before he moved to his beloved Skagit Valley. He was a minimalist, and the studio was very sparse, unlike when I was in the space with my string base, furniture, and lots of art supplies. Richard truly loved the space, as did I. Although I was working full-time in healthcare, I remember visiting this studio on the weekends when classes were taught by Kathy or Diana. To not disrupt the classes, I would always slowly walk around during their lunch breaks, and I would say, you are so brave to try to paint. I could never paint. But then Kathy and Diana took me under their wings and encouraged me to explore fine art. The friendship, encouragement, and the laughter of these two painters were steadfast and wonderful, and I wanted to share some of the photos of our fun. In fact, my first real introduction to women painters was in this same studio. Several members were packing paintings that were going to Kuwait. It was then that I realized just how far women painters reached significantly beyond just the Seattle area. But again, I was convinced I would never be a true artist. I would just have fun with painting as a hobby. 
As I progressed as an artist, I joined a 12-member art co-op at the Pike Place Market called the Art Stall Gallery. It was there that I met several more members of women painters. And again, I was impressed with the wonderful camaraderie and competence of these women artists. The Pike Place Market inspired many of the paintings, and I'm showing you some of those images now. It was most thrilling to chat with customers from around the world about our paintings. And for seven summers during this time, I painted on a vintage fishing boat, participating in Kathy Gill's annual week-long workshop in Alaska. These trips were life-changing for me in so many ways, and I feel very lucky to have had the experience. So eventually, I took the leap and joined Women Painters in 2000. Soon, I was elected president, and I had fun working on many important projects, which I'll mention some here. First of all is the Yvonne Twining Humber Bequest, which was established in 2013, thanks to David Martin, curator for the Cascadia Museum in Edmonds. He suggested to Yvonne that she support women painters in some long-term sort of way. So upon her passing, she left us a generous $100,000 bequest to women painters. Also, we started the Women Painters website, which was established by new member Kay Dewar. And about the same time, a uh, we were offered the current Women Painters gallery space at a huge discount. Then there was the Irish Artist Exchange at Fort Warden. It was a major highlight for us. Artists from both North and South Ireland came to Fort Warden, and none of them knew each other or us, but it didn't take long for all of us to bond over the creating of fine art. Of course, there's the Women Painters 75th anniversary celebration at the Whatcom County Museum. This show and the resultant book, which you see here, are an important marker of our history in the Northwest. Wow. So this book is a real treasure for women painters and I'll tell you, I'm going to be forever grateful to Rose Belknap, Donna Levitt, and certainly David Martin for pulling it together. I have to say, I lost a lot of sleep over this because I wasn't sure it was going to come together. I'm also grateful to Yvonne Twining Humber. Her bequest helped pay for a lot of this book. So I'm very, very ha happy about this. Back in 2002, we once again recognized that Women Painters was established as a statewide organization, but had little or no presence in Eastern Washington. We tried to get an Eastern Washington chapter or division established in Ellensburg in 2002, but for several reasons, it just did not work. This was the second or third attempt over the years, I've been told, by women painters, and they were all unsuccessful. The biggest barrier, in my opinion, uh, for getting a chapter started was the requirement to have members attend at least two meetings a year in the Seattle area. It was just too difficult for artists to commit to that kind of travel twice a year. But now, with the availability of Zoom and two meetings a year held in the eastern Washington area, area that barrier no longer exists. And I'm happy to say we now have about 19 members and uh, over here in eastern Washington, and I'm so pleased to see that this is finally happening. Women Painters is finally a statewide organization. These photos you've been watching were from our recent neighborhood exhibit in Chowila. 
I really experienced a major change in the content of my work over time. I went from painting realistic urban landscapes, which sold very well at the art stall and the Pike Market, but I needed a change. And that change was message art on social issues. And social issues that interested me were health care, demographics of aging, the COVID pandemic, and women's issues, among a few. The content of the paintings really became important to me. And Catherine Cheng Lu, an amazing artist and teacher in California, gave me some words of advice that really changed my artistic life. And her words were, paint what you think about, Nancy. And so I really thought about that for quite some time. And this really gave me the direction that I needed for my new work. So after my husband, Lewis, died in Seattle, I knew that I wanted to return to my family roots in eastern Washington. I particularly missed the wide open spaces of wheat fields. So I started researching homes around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. But my friend and fellow women painter member, Betty Jo Fitzgerald, had other plans. Many of you may know that Betty Jo was very active in women painters as president, and she was also a most capable treasurer and board member of the group for many years. She cared deeply for women painters. So Betty Jo was in the last year of her life, unfortunately. Um, she had serious chronic health problems. And unbeknownst to me, she was trying very subtly in the background to set her husband Jim and me up as future traveling companions. On more than one occasion, she asked me to look out for Jim once she was gone. So he, he, she did not want him turning into a hermit farmer in eastern Washington. Well, I'm happy to say that her efforts worked. Jim and I have been happily married for four years now. We have a wonderful small farm in the middle of the Palouse wheat fields, and I'm only an hour away from my family in Spokane. This city girl is happily collecting fresh eggs every morning overseeing the care of a geriatric llama and enjoying life. I'm also volunteering at the Perkins House Museum in Colfax, and I get to dress up in vintage dresses, which is great fun. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Mm -hmm.